guys so in this video i am discussing about maxillary artery which is an important essay topic from anatomy so i am discussing it in two videos in this first video i'll be discussing about the origin and the cause and in the second video i'll discuss about the branches and the distribution so let's start with the origin in order to say about the origin you have to start from where external carotid artery emerges so let's see imagine this is your skull and this is the thyroid cartilage so the common carotid artery it divides at the top edge of thyroid cartilage into internal and external carotid arteries from where the largest terminal branch of external carotid artery that is called as your maxillary artery okay so this is about the origin okay so maxillary artery is the larger terminal branch of the external carotid artery okay guys so now we are going to discuss about the course of the maxillary artery so the maxillary artery is divided into three parts by the lower head of the lateral pterygoid muscle so let's see the first part is also called as the mandibular part that is from the beginning or from its division from external carotid artery to the lower border of lateral pterygoid muscle so let's see how it is passing through so imagine this is the inner surface of the mandible so here you have the neck of the mandible and this is your spinomandibular ligament okay neck of the mandible and spinomandibular ligament so your maxillary artery will be passing in between these two that is with the neck of the mandible laterally and with the spinomandibular ligament medially okay it will pass in between through this so this is the first part of the maxillary artery mm. so first part is also called as the mandibular part that is from origin to the lower border of the lateral pterygoid it lies between the neck of the mandible laterally and the spinomandibular ligament medially now coming to the second part it is also called as the pterygoid part so as the name suggests this passes through like deep to the lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle okay deep to the lower head of this is the upper head and here you have the lower head of lateral pterygoid so it passes deep to the lower head of you can see lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle okay sometimes it may pass on the lower head of lateral pterygoid so both are possible so the second part is also called as the pterygoid part so it starts from the lower border to the upper border of lower head of lateral pterygoid that is second part lies on or deep i showed you both on or deep to the lower head of lateral pterygoid now coming to the third part okay so the green color is your maxilla and the blue area is your sphenoid bone so you can see a red dotted line area that is your pterygomaxillary fissure this dotted area is your pterygomaxillary fissure so imagine you are inserting a thread or a pen or something into this pterygomaxillary fissure then it will reach a space look down below it will reach a space that space is called as pterygopalatine fossa okay so now let's see about the third part of the maxillary nerve the third part is also called as the pterygopalatine part it starts from the upper border of lower head of lateral pterygoid to the pterygopalatine fossa in the pterygopalatine fossa it lies in front of the pterygopalatine ganglion so guys we have already discussed about the origin and the cause now we have to discuss about the branches and the distribution so in the first part of the maxillary nerve we have five branches from the second part we have four branches and from the third part we have six branches i'll discuss about all these branches in the next video by using a mnemonic for making it simpler for you okay so the questions from this part is describe the following context about maxillary artery its origin and cause so origin you have to start from the common carotid artery or from where the external carotid artery is arising and the cause you have to divide it into three parts and discuss and try to draw the figure 
by yourself if you find any difficulty in drawing those figures please do mention in the comment section so we'll help you with drawing the figures in coming video okay reference i have used textbook of anatomy head neck and brain by vishram singh second edition and gray's anatomy for students third international edition now get back to your textbooks and please read and if you find any portion difficult you can comment in the comment section or you can mail us directly in dental school for at gmail.com okay and if you found this video useful please do like share and subscribe and there will be a part two of this video okay we'll link it in the description box thank you